at Sikkakola, a threshold arch by Raghavi Chennadurai. This talk is fourth in the series of the library talks conceptualized to bring out the various aspects of the art library that Dakshina Chitra holds. The first ever talk was by Errol Madhi on South Indian Sari motifs, second by myself, Shruti Ram Mohan, on Bhuta, Mask, Craft and Ritual, third by Netra Singhi on Patriotism in Tamil Cinema, and today about the Sikka Column by Raghavi. The Dakshina Chitra Library is a destination for research and study that holds over 17,000 books on South Indian arts, crafts, performance, and anthropology and folklore. The library includes various rare journals and also archives in the form of DVDs, CDs, and tapes. Today's speaker, my dear colleague, Raghavi Chinnadurai, is an artist based in Chennai, but originally a Tanjavur Punna, and is also an aspiring curator. She has established her own Tamil pop brand, artist studio called Punch Mitai, and was awarded one of the promising entrepreneurs by Indian Express and received the award from KTR, IT Minister of Telangana. She has also co-founded an independent magazine called Pen Diagram. She is deeply passionate about writing and illustrating children's books and has been associated with art education. So over to you, Raghavi. Uh, thank you so much, Shruti, for such wonderful uh, words and warm welcome. So, uh, and... Uh, Thank you for everyone who's uh, turned up uh, here and uh, good evening to all. Welcome uh, to the talk. I'm so glad to be talking about uh, such a topic which has, uh, you know, uh, intrigued me for such a long time. But I've never had a chance to actually sit down and, you know, do the research on that part. I've always uh, been uh, inspired and awed by the skill of that, but I've never actually went ahead with the research. Uh, but here at uh, Dakshini Chitra, the library talk has given me that opportunity and I'm very much uh, thankful for that and the resources which the, the library had provided me. So uh, let's start with it and uh, I must say like uh, if there, this is still a work in progress and if there's anything which you think is not appropriate or correct or could be corrected, please do let me know. Spare me a moment while I figure this thing out. Uh, is the presentation visible? Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, so again, uh, the topic is Kolam, Maths and Myths, Myths Behind the South Indian Threshold Art, especially the Sikha Kolam. And good evening and welcome you all to that. Uh, so what Wikipedia says, as with every research, let's start with Wikipedia. Uh, or Google research would how Google research would go. Kolam is a form of uh, traditional ritualistic decorative art that is drawn typically at the threshold of a house by using rice flour as per age-old conventions. It is also drawn using white stone powder, chalk powder, often along with natural or synthetic uh, color powders. Its origin believed to belong to ancient Tamil Nadu known as Tamilakam and has since spread to southern states of Karnataka, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala. And since the Tamil diaspora is worldwide, 
the practice of curling is formed in Sri Lanka, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and a uh, few other Asian countries. But we know it's just not limited to those. Recently, Tamil diaspora at US created a gigantic Sikhu Kolam installation to welcome Kamala Harris and Joe Biden at their inaugural ceremony. If you haven't looked at that, please go have a look. It's beautiful and it's huge. So uh, visual meaning, it, this was an ethnographic uh, definition and visually Kolam is a geometrical line drawing composed of straight lanes and curves and loops drawn around a grid pattern of dots. And etymologically, that is with the meaning of the word, Kolam uh, actually means beauty, aragu or makeup, that is wopanai. In Tamil speaking, people would have heard the phrase yenna uh, kolam, you know, in a, you know, in a derogatory uh, context, uh, which means uh, appearance or a form in that uh, context. So these are the different uh, definitions of kolam in different disciplines. And uh, what are the basic pulleys of kolam, that is basic points of a kolam? So kolam is a floor art and uh, it dates back to thousands of uh, years and they've retained their identity intact uh, till now. So uh, that is very interesting because kolam is not conserved as with any other art forms. They're, they are ephemeral as in they're erased and done every day and yet they have long lived most of the palaces, temples through wars, conquest, cultural impositions and uh, famines. As most of us would know, Kolam have a ritualistic connection with religious worships and then uh, festivities like Pungal, Diwali. Uh, and Kolam is not just an ornamental piece, it is a sac sacramental piece, creating an atmosphere and ambience uh, for worship. Believed to be an uh, invitation to Sri Devi and banishing her sister Mudevi, there are several folklorish and mythical anecdotes attached to it and uh, most of us would have heard all these things from our grandmothers in our house about all these you know, uh, superstitions and anecdotes connected to Kolam. And uh, there are different kinds of uh, Kolam uh, which has been assimilated in different culture to understand how uh, we are going to see about all these things uh, you know, quickly just so that we understand how prevalent, uh, ubiquitous and universal they are. Despite its commonality, every region, civilization and uh, cultural pockets have specific grammar borrowed from their immediate environment, ethnological and ecological context. So here, uh, I'll, and also I'll try pronouncing other language words, uh, but please excuse if it's not correct and please mention them in the comment. And uh, Mugudu is the plural of Mugu, which literally translates to inscribed forms. Sorry, just a minute. I'm, I'm just going to ask uh, the admin if the meeting is being recorded because I was asked to record it and I <laughs> didn't do it. Is it? Uh, the meeting is getting recorded. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Parabhi. Um, so, yeah. And uh, Mukku means inscribed forms. Most of these designs are rooted in Hindu religion and tantric symbologies. Fine tracery of intersecting lines and geometrical shapes reflect the characteristics of Andhra Pradesh Mukku. Though it shares the love for symmetry with uh, columns, they distinctly differ from the dotted lines and mathematical connections. And also conventionally, they don't have uh, embellishments and figurative designs. Mugu doesn't have any figurative design. The lines are, uh, have metaphorical connections to uh, gates of heaven. And so that uh, you know, whenever they make a certain type of column, the gates of heaven are opened and the people who are crossing the threshold are you know, coming into a good uh, environment. And Rangavali of Karnataka. This means a multicolored creeper. Though conventional designs don't have any uh, colors, they are called uh, multicolored creepers. Influenced by Sanskrit text and Vedic concepts, the, they share resemblance to snake cult of Kerala. Grids of uh, crosses instead of dot as in Kolam and they are connected. In Kolam you have grids of dots, but here you have grids of uh, crosses. And this here uh, is a design based on uh, Tulsi Madam, which is again a very uh, sacramental, uh, associated with a very religious thing in uh, Karnataka. 
and uh, Kobadma Pratha, Navdanya Rangavali, Nagamandala. These are uh, different uh, Rangavali made for different occasions and they're very ritual based. Uh, they and the Nagamandala has a very defined grammar uh, with number of dots made. Kalamarita of Kerala. So before the legend of Parasurama uh, on how his axe when he threw it down and discussed uh, of the blood after he killed Kshatriyas, uh, dreaded uh, the land of Kerala from sea. The land was believed to be occupied by a group of people known as Nagas or snake people. The snake cult uh, of worship of snakes have become prevalent in Kerala from since then. So the rituals of deeply rooted in uh, Sanskrit and Tantric practices, even they are uh, the same as the you know, Rangavali and Mugu. Uh, Kalam means a floor, Eritha means writing, which is a very uh, common word in the in South uh, area. So usually the practice of uh, tracing floor is not performed daily, as in columns of uh, Tamil Nadu, but strictly bound to rituals and votive practices where someone, you know, uh, praise to a god that they will do something if this is being done and performed by a very specific community. Uh, as in uh, Teyam and Kukolam and Onam, they are very ritual based and these rituals are uh, you know, heavily based on deity worships. Deities are usually freshly drawn and not placed as in like, you know, already done icons. Most prominent are figures of Kali. Uh, Aniyoka rice flour patterns are made after the pukolam is being erased and it's also uh, you know characteristic of Kalamiritha. Uh, these are these are characterized by parallel lines. So these are the different Kalamiritha being made in Kerala for their ritualistic purposes. And Rangoli of Maharashtra, Rangoli we uh, you know uh, commonly see it even here. Uh, these are also called Duli Chitra that is uh, translates to powder drawing. They are characterized by a uh, predominance of color. Mineral powders are sourced from uh, shirkola stones and white powder uh, and have glittering particles. So Rangoli you know, looks very even more vibrant when it is done in their native place with their native uh, resources. Uh, Rangoli now uses synthetic colors apart from natural pigments uh, and turmeric and sindhu. Next, Juti Jitra of Orissa characterized by uh, Jagannath Puri and uh, Narasimha iconographies, uh, they are both floor as well as uh, wall art form. So since now uh, most of what we have seen are uh, primarily floor based, but from up here people have also uh, done uh, floor and uh, wall based. They borrow a strong visual vocabulary from uh, Kolam as well as uh, Rangoli. And they you know, use a turmeric uh, predominantly to prep the floor before the column is being, Juti Chitra is being done. And uh, the, this particular uh, occasion uh, aligns with the harvest festival, which is also very similar to our uh, Pongal. And Alpona of uh, Bengal, uh, made during the ritual and festival periods again, not uh, made uh, as an everyday as with. Tamil columns, characterized by curvilinear and uh, free form designs. Unlike any other ground tracing uh, you know, practices, this is uh, very different and this has a very uh, unique style of drawing. Lotus is one of the major uh, recurring uh, motifs. You can, even in the form of so these columns, you can see uh, you know, a Bengali uh, makeup done on a Bengali bride. So they are all very connected to each other. Aripana and uh, Madhubani. This uh, is from Bihar. So there are two distinct forms. Mithila or Aripana is eclectic in nature and similar to other uh, floor arts. They are like uh, they can be like very similar to Rangoli. They uh, are uh, slightly similar to you know, all the other Mugu and our Kolam. Even though they are free form, they have the resemblance. Derived from the uh, Sanskrit word, alipana means to smear. So uh, that is derived from that word and uh, it is you know, uh, changed into aripana with uh, time. And uh, madhubani is a folk based uh, form, primarily a wall art done on uh, nuptials, uh, childbirth, 
they ha they have lots of illustrative figures. Uh, so the chamber, bed chamber of the newly wet are decorated on the floors and uh, walls with these beautiful Madhubani designs. And if a child is being born, if there's any rituals being done, and it is uh, decorated with a particular Madhubani designs. So these were the uh, uh, this, these were how the conventional Madhubani were uh, drawn. But now, as we know, uh, we can see it on all over papers and clothes and they've become one of the you know, uh, trending uh, art forms, folk art forms. Then Chauk Mandana of Uttar Pradesh. Mandana means to put down. So this, this, that is putting down auspicious and good luck charms and symbols on the floor. Mandala and Mandana are uh, very similar and even the sounds and phonetics of it are very similar and uh, but similar though mandana has a star in the center and uh, predominantly uh, has geometrical shapes uh, mandana has curved structure swastika is considered a sacred symbol in all these uh, three ritualistic uh, design that is chok mandana of uttar pradesh mandana of rajasthan and sati of gujarat Swastika is one of the uh, you know, recurring patterns and all of these ritual designs actually need a whole session by themselves. I've just covered a few to understand the similarities and differences uh, we can draw between these things and pull them. And uh, this will give us a perspective of how similar all these things are, how they have evolved and how it is not you know, constrained to a particular religion and a particular community. Though they all have uh, you know, specific features, they are all you know, connected by a single thread. Behind the first dot. So how it all started? uh like you can if uh, before uh, seeing the doing the research before hearing someone tell you the story if we have uh, thought about how or why the columns would have uh, evolved or emerged uh, I, I actually didn't get, have any clue but uh, this is how uh, this is what the research says why and how the tradition of columns started and here I am, when I'm saying kolam, I'm uh, talking about the ritualistic floor patterns and symbols, not just the sikha kolam. Humankind's uh, first preoccupation was survival, of course. And survival changed, uh, survival dependent on the unknown and unfathomable forces of nature. Uh, if you've watched the movie, uh, The Crudes, uh, which is one of my favorite uh, animation movies, uh, we could uh, try and understand the fear of humankind towards the nature and the unknown things. Uh, so this ambivalent attitude of fear and reverence at the same time has led them to formulate and fashion their existence and relation and harmony to the nature. So they'll have to be very aware of the nature. They have to understand the nature in order to survive. Nature was very mystical uh, to them. So demystifying the nature was one of their major survival skills. And this was a long process of observation. Slowly a pattern, when they like observed and observed, slowly a pattern, a chain of recurring events, cyclical process of cosmic phenomenon have been uh, you know, uh, made visible to them. This, uh, like, this literally actually blew my mind when I first read the uh, my process when I conceptualize an artwork uh, starts with dissecting a problem uh, which I cannot understand just by itself. Uh, so I use the process of painting to understand and explore it. Uh, apparently it is a very uh, primal instinct. So uh, when, and when they observed the pattern, they were distinguished as favorable and unfavorable. Uh, so a flood, uh, Wind, a hurricane is unfavored, and they would have observed uh, some, uh, you know, clues and hints and uh, patterns of these things. Okay, this is a month. This is a time of the year when this is going to happen. So this is a pattern. So they would have observed all that, and they have distinguished it as favorable and unfavorable. Symbols, uh, rituals were uh, fashioned to manifest the favorites. So once they've understood all that. Since they've considered a nature as a very mystical and magical being, they wanted to talk to it. They you know, uh, uh, made the nature as a 
uh, personified the nature and they wanted to communicate with it and they wanted to talk to it how can they do it they want uh, they created a ritual uh, which can manifest the favorable actions from the nature So nature and uh, intangible cosmic phenomena such as lunar, solar cycles, uh, climate, weather, etc., were rendered tangible with these uh, symbols and patterns. Uh, I think it's very much similar to the characteristic of abstract uh, expressionism, the Western art movement, where you know you uh, put down the feelings which you cannot understand in a canvas. So hunter-gatherers uh, added symbols of food, animals which attained uh, totemic importance to them. And if you've read uh, Yuval Noah Harari's Sapiens, uh, you'd have read the advent of agriculture and progression of uh, uh, hunter-gatherers to agrarian and pastoral uh, communities. When that happened, when people settled down instead of bandering, the preoccupation of survival. So they now you know, gathered in a safety of a state, they have a border, and they've actually you know, uh, uh, almost figured out the weather and climate. Now, uh, their survival, uh, the preoccupation of survival was shifted from the unknown to growing sustenance and procreation. So for growing sustenance, they also needed uh, you know, uh, human power, uh, number of people. So that uh, ultimately led them into uh, sustenance growing and procreation. So earth and women have uh, gained new importance in, during these transition. And these were associated with rituals and worship. And uh, thus we have like many uh, goddesses and floor art. That, that is when the floor has been given uh, more importance. The floor has been treated as a goddess and the floor has been you know, uh, adorned with a lot of uh, ritualistic symbols and uh, patterns. Uh, they ended up associating birth, death, fertility, uh, rebirth all with these uh, symbols conventionally each day and occasion has a specific had a specific poem uh, though it is not followed by majority uh, you know in everyday context so dot uh, as with every sikh column it starts with a dot dot uh, bindi or uh, potter is the highest form of abstraction where uh, form meets formless. Uh, similar to nature, human psyche was also a mystery. So nature was one thing, the out, it was outwards and it was a mis uh, mystical being. And the human psyche was also a mystical being for themselves. It was a mystery, it was not fully understood or it was not fully evolved. Uh, so a streamlined concentration, association, thoughts were all very abstract. Dots, total, were used to reinforce these. We can still see women considering, you know, uh, put uh, and placing the center of uh, center of a poem with much reverence and uh, belief that a well-done poem brings harmony uh, to that day. We can also find the dot in forms of uh, charms and pots uh, and doorways done with turmeric and uh, vermilion. Manjal, kungumam, putta, sandana putta. So these are the things which, uh, you know, where uh, dots uh, recur again and again through the ritualistic processes. Dots act as a major symbolism in these uh, tantric and Hinduistic uh, rituals. So literary uh, reference. Uh, before we uh, you know, go into uh, other things, uh, these are the things which is uh, the previous informations are known to us with archaeological and ethnographic research. Uh, but let's look into uh, literary and oral uh, folklore now uh, from the recent past. In Tamil Sangam literature, Paripadal, Kalitugai, Perumbanatru Padai, Silapadigaram, Mani Megalai, these are, uh, in all these things, Kolam has been mentioned in the context of appearance, form, beauty makeup but not as a floor art so in this first example from paripadal uh, you can see that malayum sandu madamu miligalum polangalo neer kutuvar appunal so in these examples uh, kolam has been uh, referred to as forms or appearance and not as a floor art 
uh, it is first mentioned as a floor art in Sivaga Sindhamani, Kambaramayanam and Bhakti Padalgal as in Nachiyar Thirumuri here from 7th or 8th century. Uh, here Nachiyar uh, sings a song to the god. This was during 7th or 8th century and in this place, in this context, Kolam is being referred to as, as a floor art. And the first prosaic, that is not a poetry, not a, a poetry form, a prosaic reference is from Arunachala Puranam uh, from 16th century. And uh, this has been mentioned by uh, Marcia Asher a pioneer in uh, ethnomathematics. Ethnomathematics is something which we will uh, see um, uh, later. Uh, so, uh, Marcia Asher is one of a major uh, mathematician who researched, done a lot of research on Kolam and uh, maths. So, folklores and uh, myths. In folk tales about Kolam by uh, V. Saroja and M. Shanmugam Pillai, They've gathered oral history passed down with, within the sex of Tamil caste and community. So uh, Mahabharata started with the incident of uh, Duryodhana stepping on a, they say, that is on quotes, Mahabharata started with the incident of Duryodhana stepping on water kolam and Draupadi laughing at him. Uh, and he wanted vengeance. So original text actually doesn't have reference of kolam. It has been appropriated uh, for imparting a moral. This has been uh, you know, changed as in the Chinese whisper. Uh, one uh, story has been added, lots of uh, contextual and uh, uh, immediate atmospheric uh, meanings to it to uh, assert that particular people. Other folk tales include the stories of uh, Satyavan, Sabatri, Krishna, Kusela, and all of these uh, original text versions have been appended with contextual morals through Kolam in later oral history, and they never had uh, the floor art Kolam in their actual original text. And uh, the lion, which uh, Lakshman and Drost protects Sita, had also been iconized in Kolam as Lakshman and Koder and drawn along with elaborate designs to barricade uh, evil at the threshold. Even now, you can see uh, a column being you know, uh, sided with two uh, lines. And these are believed to be Lakshman and Koda, which barricade the evil at the threshold. There is also this belief uh, that during the Kurukshetra war, Kolam was drawn on the threshold of those houses in which death hadn't taken place. And a yellow pumpkin flower was placed to signify that. So there are several variations of these stories as with uh, any folk clothes. And uh, now we have uh, come to Kolam of Tamil Nadu. We have seen all the different uh, styles of Kolams throughout other states. And uh, we've come to the Kolam of Tamil Nadu. Tamil community is the only one where uh, precisely spaced dots are used in Kolam with embodied maps. Also, it is one of the very uh, few uh, where Kolam is practiced on an everyday basis rather than just on occasions. So uh, till date, uh, my uh, home has uh, kolam made on its threshold, though uh, my mother or my grandmother uh, doesn't do it now. They don't do it now. They, it has been you know, permission to a person from our uh, neighborhood to do it every day. Uh, it is being done by my grandmother, I think, till 10 years ago and the practice has changed, but still we have kolam on our threshold every day till now. So kolam, Tamil kolam is being uh, categorized as line-based kolams and dot-based kolams. Padi kolam, line-based kolam are called padi kolam, uh, which is just basic lines crisscrossing each other. And uh, dot-based kolam is sikku kolam and pulli kolam. Sikku kolam is where uh, the lines you know, curve through the uh, curve around the dots, and pulli kolam is where we connect the dots with lines. And these are the basic rules of a sicker column. Symmetry, either be it a, you know, a X axis or a Y axis symmetry or a radial symmetry. In this case, uh, the top part is just mirrored on the bottom part. In this thing, the left and right are like mirror images. In this one particular third one, the same uh, unit is being uh, repeated uh, radially through uh, 45 degrees. 
and this is called the radial uh, symmetry. So, and the next one, this should be symmetry columns. If we uh, follow any one of the symmetries, and lines uh, should cross each other only once. That is in a, a very infinite point. It should not cross each other on a finite uh, space. Dot should uh, be surrounded on all sides. So these are the very basic uh, you know, rules of the column. And uh, grammar of Sikha column, uh, from Puli column and uh, creative mind, the book uh, published by Lamps. So these are the very uh, basic seven uh, fundamental units, building blocks based on which we can draw a numeral number of designs, like building a wall uh, using a brick and creating infinite ragas and uh, swaras, that is tunes and notes. They have been you know, uh, compared to ragas and swaras. So uh, these are sari, gama, pa, dani, and uh, with their structural formation, they've been named as E, F. In some cases, they've been referred to as R, and uh, G, M, uh, I mean H, uh, O, Yes and uh, you. So these are basic uh, structural uh, grids which is formed by two cross three dots. And these uh, seven things, uh, four of them can be uh, mirrored and five of them can be uh, reflected. So mirror images and reflections, totally we have 16 basic units without you know uh, unique basic units without repeating anything we have 16 basic uh, units of two cross three columns and these are converted uh, these are four different forms to convert the two cross three into three cross three and this renders a 63 unique designs and they've been compared to 63 uh, and uh, so these are the ones where the one two cross three grid is placed and it is added by any one of these four uh, patterns, be it a separate circle where all three are you know, disconnected, be the bottom two are connected, be the top two are connected, be it all three are connected. So in any of these four forms, it is connected to any of those 16 forms. So this four and the 16, Form 63 uh, unique three cross three columns. And uh, three of these are called syrup columns out of these 63, which are uh, syrup columns are radial symmetry ones, which is you know, so similar when seen from all directions. Uh, so uh, just imagine an early human trying to understand the distance between him and the prey or a water source. Uh, before they were, uh, they were constructed, uh, structured uni units to measure these. Before they were kilometers, before they were you no know, meters. The skill of understanding distance, equidistance, rationing the food for his family until the next hunt or uh, until the beast leaves the cave door. These skills were not taught to them in a class by a maths teacher. Rather, the, these were embodied and imparted as instincts. Even in the recent past, uh, my paternal grandmother uh, doesn't actually read, uh, she doesn't read really count, uh, she can't count more than uh, 100, I think, and neither can, she can do uh, numeral arithmetic. So, but she could manage the household accounts and uh, perfectly and she have raised you know uh, so many people not just her children and so many people and she has done a amazing job in budgeting and everything so all these have been like in her uh, instincts and uh, there's this vernacular phrase called kai pakkuvam uh, where right amount of ingredients are added through instinct rather than a measuring cup to make a dish and so all these uh, instincts to uh, maintain and sustain a household were inculcated and nurtured through embodied maths in forms of poems, slogans and such. So uh, instead of directly, in, because they didn't have a visual or structured uh, form of maths, uh, so all these were you know, imparted through daily activities. So they didn't formulate a nomenclature or a system, they understood uh, permutations, combinations, uh, division, multiplication uh, through these systems. Uh, 
uh, now we are going to convert the two cross three columns into five cross five columns. So you can take uh, four two cross three columns and use any of these things. So if you are placing four E's in all four directions, radial symmetry, and you use a pattern of uh, four X's, you can connect those four X's like this, and this will render a five cross five column. So this is another example where you can connect four F with four separate X's as a five cross five column. These are all uh, there uh, in the book called the Pulley Column and Creative Mind. They've, uh, you know, they've uh, distilled down the process of column as a perfect grammar and structure with meanings beyond uh, everything, behind everything. And uh, this is a way in which uh, S column was uh, connected to uh, each other. So just with these uh, 16 basic units, and uh, how on connecting the other uh, few, you can uh, create uh, uh, numerous designs and patterns. You can just place the dots and do all of these uh, basic units and connect them using the other ones which we have learned. So uh, this, with these, just these seven basic things and 16 uh, mirror and reflection and with the other uh, seven, you know, things which is used to uh, generate permutations and combinations, you can generate any different uh, styles of numerous styles of columns with a given number of uh, dots. I'm still uh, exploring this and I'm still uh, trying to learn. And uh, here we come to uh, maths in column. So Fibonacci uh, sequence, uh, as I, I'm sure a lot of you would have been uh, familiar with the name as such, you would have uh, read it in your school curriculum. Uh, the sequence is created by adding the previous two numbers. So the golden ratio is formed when ratio of A plus B, a two number, a sum of two number, and A is equal to A is to B. So this is called the golden ratio and it is being used in uh, several design theories and graphic designs and creating logos. Uh, people believe the logos which have a uh, you know, golden ratio have uh, uh, appeal to human brain and it uh, appeals to you know, beauty. So Professor S. Uh, Naranen, a physicist, uh, in course of drawing these columns as a part of his hobby, discovered the uh, connection and has come up with some uh, fascinating uh, designs. So he has uh, followed the golden ratio and uh, Fibonacci series to create columns and they have uh, you know, resembled a uh, column which has been done by our ancestors for uh, you know, uh, before thousands of years. So told this detail of this particular study is uh, beyond on the scope of our uh, talk, I'm planning to do a uh, detailed research in this uh, soon and I'll uh, try and get back with the you know, detailed account on all this. And array diagram and uh, column. Here, Siromani and Kamala Kritibasan uh, have they uh, published a paper establishing a method to represent column in uh, array matrix. So uh, a math mathematical uh, array formula which has been developed or evolved without any connection to whatsoever to the column has been used to represent column. So column uh, is nothing but a different form of expression, different form of uh, unit in which all the mathematical concepts, so here in array diagram, uh, numerals and uh, alphabets uh, are used to represent a concept and here in column dots and lines are used to represent the same similar concept. So Euler circuit, uh, Leonard Euler uh, was a Swiss uh, mathematician, physicist, astronomer, geographer, logician and engineer uh, who made important and influential discoveries in many branches of mathematics. Uh, so, in uh, graph theory, an uh, Eulerian trail is a trail in an infinite graph that visits every edge exactly once. So, this is a specific, uh, uh, this is a graph with a defined set of rules. Uh, 
so this has its use and application in lots of uh, practical things so, uh, inspecting railroad tracks and postal routes uh, uh, collecting garbage so uh, and uh, if you have uh, anyone has read a the book uh, called curious case of dog in the night i'm uh, mark like mark head and i think i'm right about the book's name where a uh, autistic uh, person tries to find the way uh, through a uh, lost when he's lost he takes uh, the euler circuit so that he doesn't end up going in the same route that is a very uh, beautiful book if you have read it so uh, for these things euler circuit are being used and uh, dna sequencing and uh, fragment assembly and protein sequencing they all have uh, their resemblances with the circuit and it has resemblance with uh, r sico column and psychological uh, benefits like we have already discussed uh, uh, all these practices of column has given the uh, community uh, embodied uh, psychological benefits mandala uh, is a graphical representation of the center that is self uh, jung karl jung a psychologist and an artist uh, he believed that uh, a mandala uh, drawn by a person will reflect his self or center his or her self or center it can appear in dreams or a vision or it can be created spontaneously by drawing uh, generally speaking a mandala is a geometrical form a uh, circle or a square abstract and static uh, formed by objects or beings these uh, mandala again are a form of uh, kolam and they have a strong connection to the kolam and by uh, said by karl jung that it represents your psyche and it can analyze used to analyze your psychological uh, feedbacks and in similar way uh, i am uh, uh, i have seen a uh, very uh, basic and uh, primary research is being done on how to use mandala on a therapy session and uh, also using kolam on therapy and psychological uh, to psychological benefits and i'm pretty uh, pretty sure that uh, lots of uh, educational facilities are uh, ex exploring the option of using kolam in their uh, in their uh, curriculum and kolam is being uh, used and uh, researched by a lot of people uh, in ethno studies that is ethno mathematics and uh, ethno science and ethno psychology like all of uh, these new branches of uh, studies are being evolved and with these things particular to tamil nadu our ethno mathematics uh, will definitely have a uh, kolam on behind all that so practicing a uh, kolam even with the realizing all these other steps i'm pretty sure that uh, one will be able to attain that sense of uh, psychological clarity and uh, mathematical awareness and spatial uh, recognition from it uh, in uh, kolam other uh, major math uh, concepts which has been uh, prevalent are symmetry spatial uh, recognition and uh, infinity so all these things are here and there imparted through kolam through uh, out the generations uh, for our ancestors and uh, i have always uh, with this our max part of the uh, thing is done i have always been fascinated with uh, kolams and the way my amachi had a notebook and i'm working on a series and they were still exploring them in my works here and there and that was the starting point for me to choose this uh, topic so for me it feels like i've read a uh, you know million words about kolam and uh, i swear that uh, kolam has uh, come to me on my dreams once or twice through the last uh, month but i barely scratched the surface of the research and understanding i am hoping to uh, you know dwell more into this and understand it uh, more and so yeah i uh, thank you uh, i thank everyone who is here and uh, i before we uh, no move on to the questions uh, these are the books which i have referred uh, these are available uh, in our wonderful library from dakshin chitta 
uh, I thank uh, Indu Ma'am, all the library uh, uh, faculties, and uh, Ritwik uh, here, who has uh, you know went and took pictures for me uh, of books, and all interns, my friends, and uh, here supporting me through this. And I'm uh, most thankful for my Amarchi and Amma to be uh, to have brought me up. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, hi, Raghavi. This is Madhi here. Uh, there's a question in the ch chat box that uh, it is from Shantanu Jha. He asks you to talk about how women, in brackets, mm -hmm. and men acquire this art through childhood. Uh, as in, for me personally, it was by seeing my uh, Amachi uh, practicing this particular art form, and she had a like I mentioned, she had a she has a huge uh, notebook. Uh, just a minute, I'm just going to stop the share. Yes. Yeah. So uh, she has this uh, chunk of uh, notebooks and. And she has the series of notebooks actually, and uh, it is being passed down as uh, family uh, heirlooms. So me and my sisters used to fight for those uh, notebooks. So they have uh, tremendously intricate patterns and cola note. Yes, uh, so they have uh, these cola note, and uh, through that we started being aware of these designs. And it for me at a certain point became a challenge. So let me try that if I'm going to. Do, do this so that was the point for me but if you come from a community where you don't practice column every day you can start uh, online there are a lot of online platforms which you know, teaches you the tutorials and uh, basic columns uh, you can start teaching your child that using a graph and then they'll slowly uh, pick it up are there any studies on uh, and Rashmi, hi Rashmi. So, are there any studies on how this impacts community uh, building? I have uh, come across a few studies which talked about uh, how the rituals helped uh, people connect and maintain the safety and uh, sanity of a community through poems and other things. Uh, I'm not very sure about uh, community building uh, as in the context in, in which you are referring to but there definitely will be like i said uh, i have almost read about 20 papers or so but i barely touched the researches which has been already been done on thank you kiran uh, i have a question lakshmi here hi lakshmi uh, I, for me, the most fascinating bit in the presentation where I saw um, column representations of for every swara, sari gama, ah. uh, mm -hmm. that's just, uh, yeah, it's quite mind blowing. Is there a rational as to how they coded sound into a visual form? What was the, was there any grammar to it? Yeah, so uh, apparently there is, though I am not very familiar because I'm like, I have no idea about uh, music or other art forms, uh, but they, uh, it has been extensively talked about uh, in books about how these things were connected to music and also dance forms. So I can uh, forward the links to you once I'm uh, done. Yeah, that will be great. Thank you. Thank you. And um, thank you, uh, Twisted Tales. Thank you, uh, Lakshmi. Thank you, uh, Rashmi, Rashmi, there's a question by uh, Karen, I guess. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm mispronouncing their name for sure. I'm sorry, whoever it is. So they ask if the Kolim, uh, if you would call the Kolim a Tamil practice or a Hindu practice. Uh, <laughs> that is a very huge question for uh, such a small mind as of mine. Uh, but I uh, think uh, Kolim as in the word, Kolam is definitely a Tamil uh, word uh, in this context of the presentation. But the practice of uh, floor uh, tracing and the practice of that is uh, even beyond Hindu practices. It has been practiced uh, in Buddhism, like Mandala and Tibetan art and a uh, lot of other arts. Yes. You also have a question. Hi. I want to know the connection that it has with the mm -hmm. uh, dance form. 
column that has uh, with dance forms uh, yeah so uh, like i said i haven't uh, dwelled in the into that particular part but i saw a particular dancer who done uh, extensive research on that and uh, i will I, i don't remember the name name right now but i'll get back to you with that and uh, this is Uh, sorry, I didn't get your name. I am Kasturi. Kasturi. Okay, so uh, I will definitely uh, note down the name and uh, note down the resources and send it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have. Hi, Kargila. I have this doubt after I listen to the part of uh, how people were trying to understand nature and things evolved ever since. But how did it end up? Only as a women's practice to practice this art. I mean, why do you think has it uh, not been practiced by uh, men as well in all the region? Uh, yeah, there has been a very uh, minute reference uh, to this when uh, the uh, like I said, when the hunter gatherer uh, community settled down as agrarians and uh, agrarians and pastoral community, women has been given a higher uh, no reverence place of reverence not maybe in a societal hierarchy but reverence uh, for their uh, power of procreation uh, menstruation which has been aligned with the lunar cycle have, again was a mystical thing for uh, you know humans to understand so women were uh, mostly uh, required and expected to do all these rituals and uh, after that i think it was a series of uh, things which happened one on top of other which uh, you know diverted us into a patriarchal society and women being you know a household uh, uh, caregiver Hi, uh, Raghavi. I want to add to the presentation that I've also heard mm -hmm. that kolam um, uh, is uh, sensitive to the environment around it as well because it's the rice flour that is used yeah. for uh, making the design. So ants or other uh, animals, creepy crawlies, can always come and uh, have a have their fill throughout yes. the day. Uh yeah of course that is a very uh, nice point sorry i forgot to mention that and this is a very first thing which everyone tells about kolam kolam is usually done to feed the you know insects and uh, crawlies around us thank you kalpana uh, i am just mad of kolam is a very good library of what i have drawn and kept and planning to teach children soon this is being initiated by my sister that's a wonderful initiative please do Can I add something? Yes. Yes. Uh, see, during Pongal time in villages, uh, there was always a uh, uh, competition. It's not in the sense of current day competition. They always filled their front yard with different kinds of columns, uh, so that uh, there was an uh, underlying competition with uh, each uh, neighbor and the entire community as to whose. Uh, front yard is looking better, and who has learned a new column to fill it up, and yeah. you know, so there is to be a, that. That I think should lead to a community building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. of course. Yeah. There was uh, an underlying this... competition when I visited my village, my father's village rather, in Pongal time. Uh, each uh, one is, would buy. Hmm? Which is uh, which village is that? This is a village in Palghat. Yeah. Uh, so we basically followed Tamil traditions, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, um, uh, there, uh, then uh, the, the every uh, girl in the every girl or woman in the family would try to find a new one, which she can introduce in front. So it will yeah. be divided into um, sections, and each uh, um, part would be filled up by a uh, column, like. And it used yeah. to be very interesting, yeah. Uh, it, this this kind of a uh, you know uh, good spirited competition in the community is still being practiced in my uh, hometown and in my uh, street. So uh, morning four or five after we uh, finished our kolam, we used to take a walk to see who else have done you know kolam which has been uh, elaborate than ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Thank you, Shobha. Yeah, which village is yours? Uh, 
so uh, and uh, I Yeril Madi. I am just going to tell that because that is a wonderful thing she has told, and uh, I haven't thought about it. Uh, so we, uh, as a team, ask you that uh, since we have known, uh, learned so much about poems, and there are a lot more to learn still. Uh, please start uh, using rice-based poem and organic colors, and uh, rather than using synthetic colors, uh, I for personally stopped using uh, synthetic colors. For the last uh, one or two years, and there are a lot of other alternatives for that. You can use coffee powders, you can use turmeric, sindoor, and a lot of other things. And uh, start uh, doing that, and uh, follow the rituals in a more uh, sane and meaningful way. Hi, Ragavi. Uh, this is Venata. So, um, your presentation is really. Really good, and uh, I'm so much fascinated by the swaras with the kolam uh -huh. patterns. And one more thing I wanted to ask you: See, there are in traditional kolams we have this uh, tulasi madam, parijatam, uh, yeah. and then maavale kotte like that. Yeah. So, so do you have a list of kolams and their traditional names um, like that, uh, so that yeah, you can uh, give it to us? Yes, uh, I have uh, only for few things. Yeah. So I do have, even though I don't know everything, but uh, through research I've accumulated few informations of a lot of uh, names of these columns and uh, why they've been uh, called so. So yes. once maybe uh, through the coming week, uh, with along with the other question about the dancer, I will also I'll write an email and forward to you. Okay, okay, that's really nice of you. Thank you. Thank you. So just some reference to learn about organic colors other than the ones you've mentioned here. So uh, I'm uh, really sorry, these are the only uh, few which we have used coffee powder and turmeric and uh, uh, you know, uh, sindhu. Uh, Dandraj, do you know anything about the natural colors which we can use for pollen? Uh, there is uh, an organization called True Tone. Uh, they sell holy colors and all of that. So that is sold online. But uh, for kolam, how to make organic colors, like you said, rice, husk, and all of that, very uh, things that we find in the kitchen, that's what is used. And Color Ashram also sells such colors. So online, there may be some tutorials that we can mm -hmm. check. I'm not too yeah. aware of that. But these are two organizations that I know which sell colors that we can use for kolams as well. Okay. Hi, hi, Raghavi. Hi. Sorry, sorry. Hi, Raghav, this is Nagra. Just want to ask you in Dakshin Tiksra, if, if an European comes and can they get a chance to have a chat with you guys and understand the science behind the column? Is it possible? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, can you please repeat your question again? I couldn't hear you properly. Right. Now, if a European client is coming to Dakshin Tiksra, huh? can they get to have this, an interaction session or something like this on this column? Yeah, so uh, we are a group of uh, eight interns uh, whose uh, you know, tenure will uh, end this uh, June, but there will be a lot of other people who will be able to guide you and the library will be uh, still there with all these wonderful resources. You can definitely visit Dakshin Chitra and go through all these uh, books and uh, ask our uh, uh, mom, uh, Indu mom, uh, who is a wonderful librarian and uh, any other interns who will be there at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Nagraj. So, uh, it is True Tone and Color Ashram. These are the organic brands which sell uh, organic colors. Yeah, it's True Tone Inc. So, thank you, everyone. Like, a lot of people have commented uh, you know, nice, warm uh, words. So, uh, thank you, all of them. And uh, please, uh, if there's no other question, I think. Uh, uh, you think this art form is diminishing due to settlements and apartments? Any idea to restore this practice? Personal experience? Or experience? So, uh, you can actually start with uh, colon notebooks. That is a great way to uh, start. We have these uh, dotted notebooks available in craft shops, or you can even get the uh, cheaper uh, graph notes to use. And you can start it as a 
uh, pen paper practice and then whenever you get time you can move to flow hi thank you hello hi raghavi can you hear me yes and this is sorry i am hi okay i use uh, these leaves different kinds of greens that we have around in our garden it gives different green colors likewise the flowers i cut them into small bits instead of using the what you say the customized colors and things that you are talking about nature has given us a lot of colors when leaves yeah. flowers roots even if you dry some when you cut a vegetable and if you dry them you get different kinds of colors which i say yeah. and i use it in my poem because people were asking you well, what are the yeah. organic materials that you can this is how i do yes. even when you peel an orange you have different kinds of orange it will be in an orange color it will be a green color you also have a yellow or orange when you peel an orange and eat i don't throw yeah. away i yeah. just keep it i store it and i use it for my poem even salt rock salt it can be mixed with all these when you can when you crush this uh, orange uh, peel off into a powder and mix it with salt it will give you a different color which is all mm -hmm. organic these these things are all in my mind which i'm going to teach my children when i start my classes that's wonderful uh, thank you that is a very uh, nice thing to add and like she said uh, a lot of natural pigments which uh, may not you, know, you cannot use in other arts without prepping them but since poem is an art which is uh, being done every day you can definitely use those pigments to the advantage of it yeah thank you thank you and uh, please uh, from uh, dakshin chitra we are asking all of you to uh, do a column a simple one or elaborate one let's have a healthy uh, community based column competition here as in the old style and please share it on uh, your instagram and tag dakshin chitra will do thank you <laughs> thank you thank you thank you vandas thank you everyone thank you uh, parvati for uh, you know facilitating the whole thing and thank you everyone at uh, dac uh, for uh, the support and uh, being there thank you thank you thank you raghavi thank you Uh, thank you so much raghavi and if we have no more questions i think we can sign off yes um so i hope it's been a wonderful uh, session for all of them who are attending and i request all the audiences to please participate in the upcoming library series sessions and also keep us posted regarding your feedback and if there's any topic that you would want us to touch upon we'd be wonderful uh, it would be wonderful for us uh, and we'll oblige thank you so much thank you thank you erin